All right, so um, welcome everybody. Today we're here at um, a sneak peek of our biggest and greatest construction site in the history of SeaWorld Orlando, and that is Antarctica Empire of the Penguin. Uh, today we're standing inside of what is called the Creative Model Room, and so in front of you is actually our uh, working contract model uh, for the project, which is part of the process that we go through to ensure the accuracy and the scale and the detail of all the ice work um, that we wanted to have inside and outside in this attraction was uh, produced exactly how we wanted it to be produced out in the construction site. Um, behind me are also reference images that are used. These reference images only represent about one half of the exterior space of the realm uh, itself and then we have a whole other wall and then a whole other book that represents for the interior spaces. Um, so we're currently in construction still on the project. Uh, construction is moving at a very rapid pace. And uh, today we're going to be able to give you a sneak peek of that construction site. So I, I tell you this with, with love and joy. Uh, this is a working construction site. Um, they've done their best to kind of make it quiet for you guys today. Uh, but everything is in process. You will see no finished work today. You will see nothing that is complete. Um, and make sure you look down while you're walking around taking photos because there is uh, hoses and it is a functioning job site. And you'll be able to see some folks, I think, today actually carving some of the ice work out on the site. Okay, And so you're welcome to take photos of those guys as well. Um, so Antarctica Empire of the Penguin is our largest expansion in our history. Um, it is a new world inside of SeaWorld, and you guys have the benefit right now of looking down as if you were in a hot air balloon. If a penguin could fly, this is what it would look like um, of the actual realm itself. For those that remember the old, uh, the previous penguin encounter and penguin plaza here at SeaWorld Orlando, um, it was in the same exact spot that we're at today but we've re-envisioned um, it and put it together now as the new epic Antarctica Empire of the Penguin. Um, the biggest difference you'll notice is that we no longer have multiple ways to move in and out of this realm. Uh, we specifically scripted and wrote the experience so that the guests would enter through the realm and exit through the realm or vice versa. They can go freely how they want to go through two portals uh, ice portals into the realm. Uh, the larger ice portal, which is the largest piece of rock work on our job site, is located at the sea lion and otter side of the project. Over there, the smaller pieces, that's Journey to Atlantis, and there's reasons why these things are scaled differently, but I won't, you can talk about that offline if you guys want to. Um, the, uh, the center of the plaza, right there, is the South Pole, that, that little fancy stick with a pearl on it. <laughs> so that is the South Pole, uh, which we will actually have here in the project, uh, the, a scale replica of the real one down there on the South Pole. And then, most importantly, is the iconic mommy penguin and juvenile penguin rock, which is the entrance to the attraction. So that's these two structures right here. If you're on the wrong side, it won't make sense. But if you're on the right side, it will make sense. Um, so, and you'll be able to see this out in the job site today. Again, nothing's finished, but you can kind of get the drift of what we're doing out there. Um, this actually represents the entrance to um, one of the various things you can do inside the realm, which does include um, the, the, the ride experience, the habitat experience, and the pre-ride experience um, is all under the black. Well, not all of it. A small portion of it's on the black. Um, so that is, uh, that's kind of how the, the, the area breaks off. On the other side, is and this is all about nature and the environmental extremes and the realness of Antarctica. On this side, uh, interesting enough, there's some folks that do do science in Antarctica. Uh, no humans live in Antarctica full time uh, because Antarctica is managed by a treaty of which we're all parts of that treaty. Uh, if we're all from North America, we're part of that treaty. Uh, so we're all actually Antarcticans ourselves. Uh, our country and many other countries uh, throughout the planet are part of the treaty that protects Antarctica. Uh, but scientists are allowed to visit Antarctica and, and stay there for extended periods of time to do real science. And they're studying many different things down there. And so we want to talk about that science as well and how humans survive and live, modern humans survive and live in these extreme environments. So over here we're talking about penguins and over here we're talking about humans, and in between is where we all kind of get to meet. Um, so over here we have a new, uh, uh, this is the culinary team's uh, new uh, culinary experience inside with exterior and some interior dining, which is not modeled on the model. The home plate building, uh, which we refer to as home plate, is the, uh, is the new gift shop uh, for Antarctica, which has some new unique attributes inside of it. This is a new programming profile for um, a new culinary experience that we don't have currently in our park and how that operates. Um, and then there's a few other things inside this world uh, that we're not talking about today, but some other experiences guests will get to have uh, inside that uh, we'll be sharing with you guys a little later. 
Um, so that's the realm. Um, behind you is the penguin habitat. So that is half of the penguin habitat, that model back there. And I'll go stand in this corner and we'll talk about that, okay? Half of the uh, penguin habitat space, um, which is part of the attraction experience inside of Antarctica Empire of the Penguin. Um, the thing you should probably be paying attention to is the little brown army man and the little black penguins um, right there. So these are the discussions and the connectivity and the proximity that our guests will have uh, with the animals themselves. Um, there is how you get in and out of this exhibit. We're not going to share with you today, but this is really a, a good representation of what you can expect to see uh, inside the space itself. Um, that is real snow. Uh, there is ice in there. There is rock work in there. Uh, all the things that you would sort of expect to see. There's water in there, of course, as well. Um, new and brand new, it was looking very different from, uh, this is very different from the previous habit, uh, exhibit that was here, but very new is our new underwater dive gallery. Uh, and so this is penguin underwater viewing. Um, when you come around, you can take some photos of it, but it is a 16 foot deep piece of glass uh, in about 20 feet-ish of water, and that allows our penguins to move vertically up and down in the water column, because penguins, when they walk on land, they're a little clumsy and they're not really made for land walking where that's purposeful. It's because their predators don't live on land. Uh, some of the birds can, can, can uh, eat the chicks, of course, but the adult penguins, they don't really have any predators on land, so they don't need to move fast. But when they go underwater, they fly like superheroes. And so we wanted to show that to the guests. So we built this new underwater viewing gallery here, that's, which is the dive window, which allows those penguins to move vertically up and down, diving out, porpoising out, and doing all those great athletic maneuvers that they're known for, and letting our guests stand at the bottom of that and looking up through at them. So this is going to be a really amazing space as well uh, in the attraction. Species. I'm off script here. So, I'm not on the script. So species, uh, we have four species of penguins, which were represented here in the previous penguin encounter, Adelie, um, Rockhopper, King, and most importantly, the Gentoo penguin. And I say most importantly because the Gentoo penguin is the penguin species that are main IP characters, that will be the host of the attraction itself, that our, our guests will get to meet that family, mom, dad, and Puck, who you've seen the webisode for Puck. Uh, they will be along the ride experience with you, and that's where you see the world through Puck's eyes. And Puck has a very different way of experiencing Antarctica than maybe me and you or any other human can see it. So we'll be allowing our guests to have that experience alongside Puck uh, and his family inside the ride experience as well. And Puck is a Gen 2 penguin um, with some unique markings with the three dots located on the side of his little bonnet that he has. So they have these little bonnets, which are what we call the white straps on their head. Uh, which is a natural marking, but um, our unique character has three unique dots on, on the side. There. So that's how you know it's him. All right. We can do questions. How'd you come up with the name? Puck? Um, a whole bunch of lawyers and a whole bunch of brand. <laughs> and a whole, It took about a year and a half uh, to get the character named and, and legally approved. Um, and that's because we intend to use the character in all forms of our businesses, um, in park and out of park. Uh, there will be a, a mobile experience related to Puck that will launch with the attraction, if not before. Uh, the walk around character is already on tour through all the major markets uh, in the Follow the Freeze tour. I don't know if you guys have been watching that going around all the markets. It will come to Miami. Am I right? Well, in Jacksonville, there's in Jackson. several okay. stops that are closed. Yeah, so uh, the best way to get that information is download the brand new free app, SeaWorld's Antarctica, and you can actually follow the tour there. It's the best way to find out when and where it's going to be. That's how I get my information, strangely enough. Um, <laughs> it works because I like to get my information from my phone. But uh, that's the best way to go, and you can actually go and, and, and have it, you can actually meet some penguins. Uh, you can meet Puck, have your photo with Puck. You can do some virtual augmented reality with, uh, with penguins, which is a lot of fun. Um, and uh, that's, that's a great way to get information. So, um, so Puck was uh, a long time coming, uh, but uh, I can proudly say that it was the name that my creative team picked two and a half years ago. So, score one for us, right? <laughs> so it was very funny that we ended up where we started, so, as normal processes are. So are there no longer glass barriers between you and the penguins? That is correct. Awesome. The glass you do see there holds the water back. So we have some above water, underwater viewing. Um, and that's actually one of my favorite spots. Um, this is another one of my favorite spots right here. Uh, and then this is uh, the glass underwater viewing. So the 
the, the space I see with the blue uh, iceberg is that public. So that's this is huge. Yeah, this, this is gas space. Yeah, and it's okay. not all modeled here. Yeah, this is gas space. Oh, so we're going to look into that, that uh, portal right there. Yeah, when you come around, you can kind of get that okay. cool, a cool view, and you can see not only vertically, but you also see a really long, deep water. This water is all connected, and this is one of our other favorite areas. This is a porpoising hole. So seals make porpoising holes um, for hunting and escaping, et cetera, et cetera, and so do, and the leopard seals use them as well, but the penguins use them to get in and out of the ice. So we built one here, which allows us to, uh, the penguins to move in and out, so they can actually dart out of this water and jump up on the ice, which will be very exciting. So they can move in and out of the water through a bunch of different uh, opportunities for them, which is cool. So when you look down, you can see how long it is. Uh, so that's a long, under, long and tall underwater viewing, and this is a long and lengthy uh, above water viewing space here. Part so, of this part, part okay. of the attraction when you're in the vehicle? It does, um, yes. Yeah. Do secret things that are <laughs> not <Okay>. here. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> when you talk about the uh, pictures, uh, I assume they're reference or inspiration photos on the wall. Yeah, so the first thing that we do on any new attraction uh, for any park that our company operates is we really figure out, of course, the story and the experience and where we want to take the guests. Um, for us, Antarctica was easy. It was, it was this great continent located on the bottom of our planet. So already you're saying cool things like, welcome to the bottom of the world. And that's a hint of a sign that you'll see in the project. Um, but the welcome to the bottom of the world, what a great opening statement for any story. You know, that's a great statement. So we used it in design. We used it. We put it in the, pro in the project as well. Um, so we knew we wanted to go there. And Antarctica has a lot of, uh, of, of really interesting, we call them the, the, the issues. It's the coldest, the windiest, the driest, most extreme place on our planet. Um, and very few humans have ever stepped foot there. And it's also full of amazing animals that manage to not only survive there, but they can thrive there. And that's really what we wanted to bring forward. But we as humans also have an impact on that environment. And so we'll be talking about that as well and what our guests can do to make a difference uh, for those animals and that ice that is so far from where we stand today. So bridging that gap um, of, of thousands and thousands of miles and making that invisible is really what we're trying to accomplish. It's been widely promoted that Antarctica will feature the coldest attraction on Earth. Is that related to the penguins? Is that elsewhere in Empire of the Penguin? It's, it's the coldest attraction at SeaWorld Orlando. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll edit it that way, but, okay. the, uh, yeah, but, the, um, but that, that relates to um, the environment um, that these, we wanted to, we wanted to, you know, Antarctica is, is beautiful, you know, hear me say these words, beautiful, wondrous, um, dangerous, and, and full of mystery, and it's also highly unpredictable. And so the unpredictability comes from the ride system. Um, the, the extreme environments, the guests will go through all those in this ride experience and pre-ride experience as well. Um, so we wanted to bring forth the big epic ice that you're going to see when you walk out. Um, and then um, and, and just all those great extremes we wanted our guests to have the chance to go through that none of us would really have the opportunity to go down there and do that ourselves because it is so far away and it's so um, extreme. And telling the story of how in that extremity these little amazing animals and their predators, of course, can survive and thrive in that harsh environment. It's an, a great story, an amazing story. Um, do you know what type of food you're going to be serving at Antarctica? I'm not gonna, we won't tell you, yes, we know, uh, but we're not going to tell you the food items, but I will tell you this much. Um, so Antarctica has a great story of scientists that live, uh, not live, but visit there and, and study there. So, and those folks are from all different countries, um, of course, continents, countries, etc. Um, and each of them bring their own sensibilities to food. And so we have constructed a, a, a better word, a canteen or mess hall, if you will, of all those scientists and their chefs. Everyone has a chef in the group, right? Not officially, but there's always like some researcher that can actually do the cooking. And so they all get together, kind of like at a, like a firehouse in America. They all get together and have dinner, and so we're having dinner with them. Um, and so you have a lot of opportunities for unique food items that are currently not found inside of SeaWorld Orlando. Yes. Are you going to have a meet and greet with Puck? There is a meet and greet with Puck, the character, the walk around character. He's currently on tour, so you can see photos of him, etc. Um, and he has a place, a couple places inside this, this realm itself where he'll, he'll be here for guests to kind of uh, get their photos and, and do all the normal character meet and greets. Hi, Susan. And an uh, important element to all of your attractions at SeaWorld is, you know, it's the entertainment, but it's also the educational, the conservation, all of that message. How much of that is going to be in the sort of scene-by-scene -scene part of Empire of the Penguin versus walking through 
you know, sort of the two phases of the attraction. Yeah, every, every attraction can't be like Turtle Trek. We right. can't sing it at the end with a giant score and big special effects. Um, so they all have different goals and, and means to those goals. Uh, the story here, first, how the story unfolds in Antarctica is first we want to establish the place. So you walk through here uh, and through the realm itself and through the glacial rift, which is what we call the space that we're in. And that glacial rift is huge and it's epic and it, it's kind of nice because you'll walk through the front here. As a, as a guest, this is not my favorite entrance, but it's the one we have to use. But it's the smaller ice. Everything you see is kind of considered small. And by the time you get around and we reveal Penguin Rock and the other ice, which is actually taller, you'll really get a sense for how large all this is. And we wanted that gravity, that, that mass and scale to be represented to scale. So, that, okay, so Antarctica is amazing. This is amazing ice scape I'm seeing. But Antarctica can also be dangerous and, and, and wondrous. And that's a lot about what the ride's about. And the ride is really seeing Antarctica, not as humans see Antarctica, but as Puck sees Antarctica. So there's some really wondrous moments there where we make that transition into really an imaginative world of Puck and how he sees his world, because he's a very special little creature and character. And then we'll return back and end up, um, you know, sort of in, in with the, the, the real colony of penguins there in Antarctica. So, um, so the story first is to establish the connection between uh, our guests and the, the subject matter, the, the penguins and the space that we're at. Uh, as they're leaving, they will soon learn, and it actually happens in a bunch of different ways, and I can get to all those today, but uh, they actually learn that it's not really, um, what the unique thing is that we're all Antarcticans. Um, if you remember the name tags we were wearing at the IAPA preview, that tells you that I'm an Antarctican, because I am an Antarctican by nature of living in North America, um, and all the other countries that are part of the treaty that protects Antarctica. So that's why we should care first and foremost, because we already are, and we really want to position what guests can do to make a difference. And we'll actually not only tell them, we'll show them, and they will do it inside, um, not necessarily the ride, but the overall attraction, the realm itself, through a couple different ways of getting that done. And the big aha moment for a lot of people, and you're going to see the penguins out there, is like, what are all these penguin carvings? Well, guess what? Penguins don't live only in Antarctica. They live all over the world. So we want to show all those guys, too, from an educational standpoint, to make sure we're correctly educating our guests that penguins don't only live at the bottom of the planet. They live all over the planet, including Africa, uh, down on the Cape. So we have, you'll see that today. You'll see the carvers out there actually carving the life-size maquettes of all the species of penguins on the planet. I did actually have somebody comment on my website saying those penguins in the artwork are not from Antarctica. They're are they're Antarctica. They're from Africa. And I uh, thought the they were crazy. The penguins in the artwork are <laughs> Antarctican. They're all Antarctic. Those were Gentoo and King, probably in the, in the key visuals. Yeah, mostly Gentoos. Okay. Gentoo's a, a important species for us just because it's our character species. So, yeah. the kings are the big ones. So in the turtle track attraction, we're seeing the animals, the turtles' habitat through their eyes at their level. This is going to be a similar experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're never, we never, like, the Turtle Trek, you kind of are alongside and as mm -hmm. Naya, the sea turtle. Um, this one, we don't transform you. There's not a, we don't start um, uh, inside of an egg. It's, it's a little bit more third party, third person point of view. So it's alongside of, and that has a lot to do with the colony and community. Sea turtles don't live in colonies and communities. They're kind of solo animals, if you will. Penguins are all about community and bonding, and that's how they live and survive in this harsh environment. So we didn't want to be a penguin. We wanted to travel along with all the penguins. So, so we, are, we are with the colony um, at proper scale, et cetera, et cetera, but we are, we're moving through with them and, and experiencing their environment as they would, um, and all that craziness, which sometimes is fun and sometimes is very, of course, dangerous. Um, you can't have an attraction without something bad happening, right? Oh no, but that really wasn't hot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Good question. I have kind of a silly question. Um, penguins are live animals, and they tend to do what live animals do. And have you? How are you addressing potential odor? So one of the uh, you know, there's actually going to be this fantastic webisode with this really smart man on it called John Lynn, who is my co-director in our department, who is in charge of our engineering systems and project management teams that build these projects. Um, and one of the first things that we did as a project team with when the creative team comes out of the little, the little room and we say, can we do this, Dad? You know, this kind of thing <laughs> happens. And, and he goes, no. Well, yes, we can. Um, and so they figured it out. Uh, the smell wasn't one of the issues we had to deal with, um, which has been dealt with and removed. 
uh, the, the not because the animals have changed behaviors, but because the engineering is a lot smarter than it used to be 20 years ago. That's, that's the, the crux of this is this is a state-of-the-art building versus a 20-year-old building, so very different building systems. Um, but we also were able to deal with um, the temperature discussions as well, which we're not talking about temperatures and what temperature is today, but uh, that was a big part of it as well, figuring that out. And that's why the uniqueness of the attraction doesn't relate to a singular ride or a singular moment. It's all the layers of experience as realistic as possible, which is what's going to make it amazing.